In this video, let's talk about how a state of command is constructed. That is to say, its command syntax. And to illustrate that, I have a small do file over here. This is just a very simple do file without comments, and you will have another do file with all the comments you need, lots of commented examples also, that you can download from this lesson. For now, let's stick to this simple command syntax over here. So the first thing I'm going to do is just execute these lines over here, all three of them, to clear status memory, change uh, my working directory, and set the command more off. And I can do that by pressing Ctrl D. You can see it was executed over here. And now I'm going to use a data set that is online. Great, it's right here to the right. And we're going to use this data set to show you how a command syntax works. So first, every time you use the help command, once again, let's execute this to see more about the command list. So every time you use the help command, you will have the title of the command, a brief explanation. It's a list, a list values of variables, and then it's command syntax. So this is what we're going to talk about now. So everything you see here in brackets is optional. So you have a variable list that's optional. You have if and in options. And then you have a comma, which is something you need to actually execute options. And the options are listed right here. So how does this work? First, you see the only thing you need to use here is the command itself, the command list. And you have an underscore under the L, meaning that you can abbreviate this command with just L. So instead of typing list, you can just type L and it's going to execute the command anyway. So let's go back to your do file here and let's see how this works. So I told you that you can execute the command list. Let's see what it does. You can see here it just lists all of the observations for all the variables that we have because we did not specify a variable list. Now we can go back to our do file. And if we execute just L, so this is the abbreviation, the minimum possible abbreviation for the command list. Let's execute this. And it doesn't really matter if you're selecting white space as well. You can select as much white space as you want, even comments. So maybe you didn't see it, but we just executed the command L and the same thing happened over here. Then if we had executed the command list. So just a brief comment on the command list. It's something very good when whenever you don't have a lot of observations, just to kind of have an idea of how your data set looks. And going back to your do file editor, I can also use li and we're going to use this abbreviation now, but now we're going to specify the variables we want to use. So I have to select the whole thing. And see now we just executed commands ID and race we just listed. I mean the commands, the variables ID and race. Here we are back to our do file. Let's say you don't want to use all to see all 200 observations. We can subset and I'm going to talk more about this in a later video. I'm just show you how it works. So let's list ID and race in one through 20. So I just want to see the 21st observations for ID and race. Let's list the, these over here. Here we are. See, we just use the command list. This is the variable list. And this here, going back to a syntax, would be an example of the in option. Now, I want to show you an example of if, which is to list all the variables if our race equals Hispanic. So there's a Hispanic race also. And let's put state in the background. So this is going to yield a mistake. Let's execute this and it says exp not allowed. So why is that? Let's take a look at our data set. Let's browse our data set to understand why this happened. So in our race, these, do you remember the blue text over here means this is only a label. So every label has an underlying value. So if you look at Hispanic right here, the 
underlying value is 1. So we need to go back and adjust our expression. And to do this, we just come here and say, please list if race equals to 1. So I want to list every single variable. Notice that we have omitted the variable list, so it's going to list every single variable and only the observations for which race is equal to Hispanic. So let's execute this. Oh, we need actually two equals. So this is the equality operator. And now we got it. Okay, let's minimize this. So note that only Hispanic was listed here. So every observation for which the race variable had the value of Hispanic was listed. So we have talked about command abbreviation. Now let's talk about variable abbreviation. So once again, if I use the command list here, control D, it's going to list everything. But I can abbreviate the var, the var list. So the variables that we use can be abbreviated. So an asterisk after a character or a series of characters is just going to be a wildcard. So here I'm going to list every variable that starts with S. So note how here we are. We have subset. We have a subset of all only the variables that start with S. I can also list uh, abbreviate the variables to start with RA. So here we have race. Let's list that and you see, and I want to subset that in addition to what we have already. So I just want the first 20 observations. So we're going to list, which is the command, the var list is RA. It's an abbreviation of the variable race. And we have an additional subset because we want to see only the first 20 observations. So let's execute all this. And here you have a list of the 21st observations for the variable race. And you can also use this hyphen over here. And this means that I want to list or whatever command you use, all the variables from gender, starting from gender, going all the way through read. Also, I don't want to go that long. So let's do it in one through, let's do different. Let's do 20 through 30. So we'll have 30 observations or 11. I'm not sure. Here, 30. So we have just made a list. Let's see. Of all the variables from gender. Mm, here. From gender through read. So there's, these are seven variables. Here you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. In 20 to 30. So we did from here you can see we started in observation number 20 and we went until number 30. And finally, you have this question mark over here, which is saying, please list or whatever command you use here again, a variable starting with RE that has an unknown character and ending in D. And the only variable we have that has these characteristics is also read. So let me execute this and you will see that all 200 observations for the variable read were listed. So this is all for this video. In the next videos, we're going to talk more about using the operators if and in for subsetting.